Imagine dunking your head underwater and trying to breathe. You last maybe a few seconds before your lungs burn and you rush back up for air. Now think about fish they spend their entire lives down there. No panic, no gasping, no desperate splashing toward the surface. At first glance it feels unfair. Why can they pull it off while we cannot? The answer lies in biology chemistry and some very clever engineering by evolution. When people hear fish breathe underwater, they sometimes picture fish sucking in water the way we suck in air and somehow absorbing oxygen water directly into their bodies. But that is not quite right. Fish are not pulling oxygen out of the H2O molecules themselves that would be impossible. With just biology, you would need industrial machines to split water molecules. Instead, fish use gills to grab oxygen gas that is already dissolved in the water. Here is the key water around us always contains a small amount of oxygen absorbed from the air and produced by aquatic plants. But it is not a lot. In fact, water holds far less oxygen than air does. A given volume of water might contain less than 1 30th the oxygen of the same volume of air. That means fish need a highly efficient system to strip out every possible molecule of oxygen from that water. And that is exactly what their gills are built for. If you have ever looked closely at a fish at the market or in an aquarium, you might have noticed the delicate red slits along its sides or under its head. Those are the gills, paper-thin structures filled with tiny blood vessels. Think of them as filters, but instead of catching dirt, they catch oxygen molecules. The design is genius. Water flows in through the fish's mouth and passes over the gill membranes. On the other side of those membranes is blood circulating through fine capillaries. Oxygen in the water diffuses across the thin surface into the blood while carbon dioxide moves the opposite way out into the water. But here is the kicker gills use something called a countercurrent exchange system. The blood flows in the opposite direction to the water passing over the gills. This maximizes the difference in oxygen concentration between water and blood at every point squeezing out every last bit of oxygen. Oxygen. It is like running two trains past each other in opposite directions so that every passenger has a chance to wave. The efficiency is staggering. Fish can extract up to 80% of the available oxygen from water compared to humans taking maybe 25% from air with each breath. Now let us pause for a second. Fish may have mastered the art of underwater breathing, but it is not easy. Water is a much denser medium than air. Moving water through gills costs energy more than expanding lungs with air does. That is why you sometimes see fish pumping their mouths open and closed rhythmically. They are acting pushing water over their gills. Even with that efficiency, fish live constantly on the edge. If the water warms up, oxygen levels drop. If pollution chokes a pond, fish suffocate. If algae overgrow and then die off consuming oxygen in the process, fish kills happen. So while we think of fish as masters of underwater breathing, their system is actually a fragile balance. Could humans evolve gills and live underwater? It is a fun sci-fi idea, but it does not work with our biology. Our lungs are built for pulling oxygen out of air, not for filtering tiny amounts from water. Even if you fill human lungs with water, the oxygen content would be too low and our lung membranes too thick to make the exchange efficient. We would drown long before we extracted enough oxygen to survive. Some inventors have tried to build artificial gills devices that pull dissolved oxygen out of water. But the sheer volume of water you would need to process makes it wildly impractical. Nature solved the problem with millions of years of evolution, and the design it came up with the gill is nearly perfect for its job. Here is where it gets interesting. Not all fish stick strictly to gills. Some species have developed creative add-ons. The lung fish found in Africa and South America has both gills and primitive lungs. It can survive in mud during dry seasons by breathing air. Some catfish can gulp oxygen directly at the surface. Even goldfish in low oxygen ponds can switch to strange metabolic tricks to keep going longer than you would expect. These adaptations remind us that breathing underwater is not just one thing. Evolution has tinkered with the blueprint in dozens of ways depending on the environment. But the core principle, the gill as an oxygen stripping machine, remains the foundation. So why do fish not suffocate in water? because water carries dissolved oxygen, and fish have gills that are optimized to harvest it with ruthless efficiency. But the deeper truth is, this fish live in a world where oxygen is a scarce resource, far scarcer than it is on land. Every gulp of water is a delicate negotiation between life and suffocation, and this matters for us too. Human actions, polluting rivers, warming oceans, draining wetlands, change the oxygen content of water. Dead zones in seas where oxygen crashes to zero are growing. For fish, it is like someone slowly turning down the oxygen knob in the air we breathe. Their survival is a daily balancing act, and our choices tip the scales. We explored the mechanics how fish breathe using gills, why water contains just enough oxygen for survival, 
animal and why humans cannot do the same. But that only scratches the surface. The real story of fish and breathing is filled with exceptions, struggles, and even warnings for us humans about how fragile underwater life really is. It might sound strange, but yes, fish can suffocate. If the water they live in loses, its oxygen gills cannot work miracles. Pollution and algal blooms. Imagine a pond overloaded with fertilizer runoff. Algae explode in number, then die off in massive amounts. Bacteria feast on the dead algae, and in the process suck the oxygen out of the water. The result is a dead zone fish floating belly up because their gills had nothing left to pull. Warm water. Heat reduces how much oxygen water can hold. That is why fish kill spike in hot summers when lakes or rivers stagnate. The water has fewer oxygen molecules and fish suffocate in slow motion. Overcrowding. Too many fish in one tank or pond can literally breathe each other out of oxygen. Aquaculture farms must pump oxygen into the water or risk mass die-offs. So while gills are efficient, they depend entirely on oxygen availability. When that dips, fish are as vulnerable as humans gasping in thin mountain air. Fish are not the only creatures that face the oxygen challenge. Evolution produced plenty of different strategies. Amphibians like frogs breathe through their skin when in water absorbing dissolved oxygen directly across thin membranes. Lungfish combine gills and lungs, allowing them to gulp air during droughts. Some can even survive months buried in mud, breathing from a makeshift cocoon. Marine mammals like dolphins and whales ditched gills altogether. They must surface for air, proving that conquering the ocean does not mean conquering water breathing. These variations show just how hard it is to live full-time underwater. Fish with gills are the main success story, but even they are constantly negotiating with physics and chemistry to survive. Gills are efficient, but they are also fragile. Their delicate filaments tear easily, which is why fish handled roughly out of water can die, even if returned quickly. They also demand constant water flow. That is why many fish suffocate if stranded on land. Their gills collapse without water to keep the filaments separated. Contrast that with lungs. Lungs are tucked safely inside a chest cavity. Gills are exposed external and vulnerable. Fish gained underwater breathing at the cost of constant environmental dependence. Here is where the story stops being about biology and becomes about us. Human-driven climate change is warming the oceans and reducing oxygen levels worldwide. Scientists call this ocean deoxygenation. In some places, oxygen levels have dropped by as much as 40% over the past 50 years. For fish, this is catastrophic. Remember, they already live close to the edge, extracting small amounts of oxygen from water that has far less than air. Shrink that supply further and entire ecosystems crash. Coral reefs, bleach fisheries collapse, and migratory species like tuna struggle to find oxygen-rich waters. So, when we say fish do not suffocate in water, we should add an asterisk. They do not suffocate as long as the water is healthy. Once humans tip the balance, the gills' miracle efficiency is no match for a dying ocean. You might be thinking, okay, sad for the fish, but how does this affect me? The answer profoundly, food security. Billions of people rely on fish as a protein source. If fish struggle to breathe, fisheries collapse. That is not just an ecological problem, it is an economic and humanitarian one. Ecosystem balanced fish are central to aquatic food chains. Take them out, and algae jellyfish and other less desirable organisms take over creating unlivable waters. Oxygen feedback loops. Oceans help regulate Earth's climate. Oxygen levels in water are linked to carbon cycles. When fish die and ecosystems collapse, the planet loses one of its stabilizers. Fish breathing is not magic, it is a precarious balance. And in a way, it mirrors our own dependence on Earth's atmosphere. We rarely think about oxygen in the air until it is gone. Fish live in that awareness every second. Their gills are not just survival tools, they are constant reminders of how fragile life really is when it depends on the chemistry of the environment.